Hey, what's going on guys? Tanmaya for Simple Snippets. Welcome back to another video tutorial and operational research. And in this video tutorial, we are going to be taking a look at a replacement problem wherein we are going to be performing replacement of objects that fail suddenly and completely. So in the previous couple of videos, we've been going through replacement theory and we've also seen two numericals based on replacement of deteriorating assets wherein the two subtypes were change in money and without change in money. So if you've missed those videos, you can check it out in this playlist. Now this is a completely different type of replacement problem and in this type what happens is the objects or assets fail completely and suddenly. So we don't have any choice other than replacing it but we have two different policies as options. So the policy is individual replacement that is replace object as they fail, replace the asset as they fail one by one or you can perform a group replacement depending upon which one is more cheaper. So this group replacement and individual replacement is more suitable wherein we have more number of assets. So for example, let's say there is a company which is having like 100 or 200 bulbs or tube lights. Okay, so inside that company, we have 100 bulbs. So of course, bulbs or tube lights come with the expiry date. So when they fail or when they are nearing that expiry date, you can make a decision whether to replace them in bulk or to replace them one by one as they fail. Now, obviously, when you're purchasing something in bulk, a lot of times you get bulk discount, right? So in real world scenarios, in companies, in actual businesses, this is what happens when you're buying something in bulk, you always get a discount. So this is where the management has to make a decision whether to make the replacement in bulk because obviously as the bulbs are going to come to an expiry date, all of them are going to start to fail, right? So instead of replacing them one by one, why not replace all of them when you already know that they are going to be failing in some days. So this is that logic, but you need to have a mathematical model. You need to have mathematical calculations, which proves that if you replace them in bulk, it will be more cheap compared to replacing them individually. So this is that type of numerical. Okay, so let's actually read the numerical and understand what's happening. So as you can see, a factory has 3000 bulbs installed. Now cost of individual replacement is rupees 3, while that of group replacement is rupees 1 per bulb. So whenever one bulb fails and if you're trying to replace that individually, you have to pay rupees 3. However, when you're replacing all the 3000 bulbs together, you are charged 1 rupee per bulb, which means you'll be only paying 3000 rupees. Okay, so this is what the question is. Now the factory management experts have to decide when to use group replacement policy over individual replacement policy. So they have two options, group replacement and individual replacement. So obviously if one or two bulbs fail, there is no other option than to perform individual replacement, right? However, what happens is as all these bulbs come to an expiration date, the factory management can also decide to take group replacement if it is cheaper than individual replacement. So this is what we have to find out as in, in which year, should we perform group replacement and in which year will be the group replacement more cheaper than individual replacement. So how can we decide this? So this depends upon what is the life of the bulb, right? So this is what is given in this table. So now we know we have total number of bulbs that is 3000. So what is given is we have months in use and we have percentage of bulb failing by that month. So what they are saying is in the first month, 10% of the bulbs are going to be failing. So this is what they're saying. So if we have 100 bulbs, then 10% of 100 is going to be 10, right? So 10 bulbs are definitely going to be failing after one month. This is what they're saying. After two months, 25% of them are failing. So this is cumulative, which means this 10% is already included in the 25%. Okay. So they're saying after two months, out of the total number of bulbs, 25% are going to be failing. After three months, 50%. After four months, 80%. And after five months, 100% of the bulbs are going to be failing for sure, which means all the 3000 bulbs are going to be failing after fifth month. So this is something like a lifespan given of the bulbs and using this two column table, we have to find out or figure out that whether group replacement policy would be worthy or not. So let's see how we do that. So the first thing that we have to find out is percentage of bulbs failing for each month. Now what they have given is percentage of bulbs failing by that month, which means that all these values are cumulative. So after one month, 10% are failing after two months, 25% are failing, which means 10% is included in this. So in order to calculate percentage of bulbs failing for one particular month, we have to subtract it from the previous month. So for the first month, it is going to be the same. For the second month, we have to take 25 minus 10, which will give you 15%. For the third month, we have to take 50 minus 25, which will give you 25%. So these values are percentage of bulb failing individually for that particular month. Okay. So similarly, we have to find out all the values and you can see for the last month, it is 20% of the bulbs are failing. And in the brackets, what I've done is I've just calculated the probability. So this is a percentage representation. It can be also represented in probability form. So 10% is 10 by 100, which is 0 
So this means that after one month, the probability of bulbs failing is 0.1. That is 0.1 part of all the bulbs are going to be failing, which means 10%. So that's one and the same. Now using this column, what we have to find out is we have to find out total bulbs that fail per month. So we've calculated the percentage of bulbs failing for each month, right? So total bulbs that fail per month would be given by the total number of bulbs that is 3000 into the percentage of bulbs that fail in that particular month. So for the first month, we've calculated that 10% are going to be failing. So 3000 into 10% that is 10 upon 100, which will give you 300. So this means in the first month, 300 of the bulbs are going to be failing. So this is very simple to understand, right? For the second month, we've calculated that 15% of the bulbs are going to be failing. So 3000, that is the total number of bulbs into 15%. But here you can see that in the first month, that is after the first month, we replaced 300 bulbs. Because obviously as soon as the bulbs are going to be failing, we have to replace them. So the individual replacement policy is by default applied. So for these 300 bulbs, the second month is not actually second. It is their first month, right? Because they were replaced after one month. So for them, the second month is not actually second. It is first itself. So for the second month, out of these newly replaced 300 bulbs, 10% are going to be failing again. Because for these 300 bulbs, it is their first month. And in first month, we know that only 10% fail. So 300 plus 10%. So this is going to give you 480. So I hope you're getting this calculation what we're doing. Let me just explain it once again. So for the first month, we know 10% of the bulbs fail. Total bulbs 3000. So 10% of 3000 is 300. So we just replaced 300 bulbs out of 3000 in the first month. That is by the end of first month. So for the second month, we know that three out of 3000, 15% are going to be failing. But we've also replaced 300 bulbs. So 300 bulbs are new that were replaced just last month. So for them, it is not the second month. It is the first month itself. So for them, the percentage of bulb failing is 10% and not 15. So that's why for them, we have to separately calculate the failure rate. That is the number of failed bulbs has to be calculated separately for this 300 by taking the first month's percentage. So that's why we do that separately. So I hope you're getting this. So moving on to the third month, we know that out of 3000 bulbs, 25% are going to be failing. So 3000 into 25% plus now these 300 bulbs have crossed two months mark, right? Even if we are in the third month end for these 300 bulbs, which were replaced after one month, it is only two months. So for them, this time it is going to be 300 plus 15% which because 15% is for second month. And now we have 480 new bulbs, which were added just in the previous month. So for them, we are going to be using this 10% rate because this is the rate of failure applied after one month. So for these 480 bulbs that were replaced in the previous month, we are going to be applying the 10% rate. Okay. So this is going to give us 843. So I hope you are understanding this entire formula and it's pretty logical. We are not using actually any formula, but we are just using simple logic. So for the fourth month, again, let me just write down 3000 into 30 percent because in the fourth month, we know 30 percent of the total bulbs are going to be failing. Plus now these 300 bulbs, which were replaced after one month have become three month old. So for them 300 into the rate that is applied for third month into 25 percent plus these 480 bulbs that were replaced in the second month that is at the end of second month are now two months old. So 480 into 15 percent because 15 percent is the failure rate for the second month. Plus these 843 bulbs which were replaced just in the previous month are now one month old. So for them also we have to apply 10% because 10% is applied for the first month. And this will give us a total of 1131. So I don't really have space over here, but I hope you can see this. And for the last value, we just have to repeat all these values. So again, 3000 into 20% plus 300 into 30% this time that were replaced in the first month are now four months old plus 480 into 25% because these 480 bulbs that were replaced at the end of second month are now three months old plus 843 into 15% because these 843 bulbs that were replaced in the third month that is that at the end of third month are now two months old. So for the two months we are using this rate and lastly the 1131 bulbs that were replaced in the last month that is in the previous month that is fourth month have now turned one month old. So they are going to be 10% of them, which are going to be failing. So into 10% and ultimately this value is 1050. Okay. So we've calculated the total bulbs that are failing per month. So for the first month, it is 300. Then we have 480. 
then we have 843 then we have 1131 and lastly we have 1050 so now we have to create one more table and what i've done is i've just reused the month month values that is 1 2 3 4 5 and the total bulbs that fail per month which, which we just calculated over here i've just written them down in a proper order over here so for the first month you can see 300 then 480 then 843 so 300 480 843 1131 1050 one, one, so now what we have to take is we have to take a summation of total bulbs that fail per month so you have to take 300 plus 300 plus 480 so that is 780 then 780 plus 843 so 1623 1623 plus 1131 2754 and 2754 plus 1050 so that is 3804 now lastly we have to calculate cost of individual replacement at rupees 3 so we've calculated that every month these many bulbs are going to be replaced right so for the first month we are going to be replacing 300 bulbs so if we are individually replacing 300 bulbs that means it will cost us rupees 3 per bulb so 300 into 3 will give you 900 rupees by the second month you can see the cumulative bulbs that have failed is is 780 so 780 into 3 is going to give you 2340 rupees by the third month 1623 bulbs have failed so 1623 into 3 4869 rupees similarly i'm just going to fill out the value of fourth and fifth month Okay so what we've calculated is we've calculated the cost of individual replacement of these bulbs so after one month when 300 bulbs fail the factory has to pay 900 rupees to replace all these 300 bulbs individually by the second month 780 bulbs are going to be failing so the cost of individual replacement is going to be 2340 and so on and so forth so this is the cost of individual replacement at rupees 3 per bulb now we know cost of replacement of all bulbs in bulk At rupees one per bulb is going to be three thousand because we have three thousand bulbs. So three thousand into rupees one is going to give you three thousand. So what we have to do is we have to observe this column that is cost of individual replacement at rupees three, and we have to see at which row is the cost of individual replacement higher than the cost of bulk replacement. So you can see for the first month it is nine hundred rupees. So we don't have to do a bulk replacement. So this is okay. At the second month the cost is two three four zero. which is still less than 3000 so even this is okay but now you can see by the third month the cost of individual replacement is so high that is it has become 4869 so this is very high than compared to 3000 so this is where your final answer comes into picture that is the factory management experts should perform a bulk replacement after 2 months because bulk replacement is going to cost 3000 but if they perform individual replacement it is going to cost them 4869 rupees So this is your final answer and let me just show you what you have to put in in the final answer. So the factory management should consider group replacement policy after every 2 months as cost of group replacement after 2 months is less than the cost of individual replacement policy after the second month because after second month you can see this is what the cost is being incurred by them. Okay so this was a numerical on replacement of objects that fail suddenly and completely. and this is where the two different policies are being used and this is how you find out which policy is more suitable at which duration so we had two different policies individual replacement and group replacement and we had to decide when we are supposed to use group replacement and when we have to use individual replacement so that's it for this video guys i hope you understood this numerical if you like this video please give it a thumbs up let me know in the comments how this video was do share it with your friends and if you haven't yet subscribed on the channel make sure you subscribe so that you get notified whenever i upload a new video So thanks for watching see you guys in the next video peace